Well, we are cooking. This is yes. the smell we're smelling with Brandon this morning. It's all about fall, and with fall comes those familiar tastes. We're talking about pumpkins, apples, and butternut squash. Brandon Faye from Trattoria mm -hmm. del Arte is back with some great dishes that'll keep you warm as temperatures begin to drop. Good morning. Right? Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. Thank you. You too. Smells amazing. Uh, it's my favorite time of the year, and using lots of great things that are in season. You've got Halloween coming up in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And you've also got fall. Like you said, it's totally awesome. Yes. Yeah, so what are we starting right? with? We're going to do a guacamole. We're going to do a fun okay, love twist it. on a classic guacamole, which is also really cool and cute for Halloween. So we're making a jack-o'-lantern eating pomegranate guacamole. Ah. Can you help me out there? Sure. Okay, so, so what's in here? It's a pretty simple recipe. You've got your, you've got your avocado, mm -hmm. your cilantro, your red onion, and your jalapeno pepper. You're very good at this. Thank you. Those uh, are good <laughs> avocados. To, because I, I got, yeah, go uh, No, you, you're the expert. No, I, I've got very lucky. They've got to be ripe. And these came out ripe, and they were perfect. And and look, it makes it really, really easy what's for you to. Best, measure. What's the best way to choose an avocado? Uh, well, first of all, you make sure they're ripe. And if they're not ripe at the, at the supermarket, bring them home. Uh, there's a lot of tricks of the trade. I've heard some people put them in brown paper bags, leave them on your uh, on your counter mm -hmm. in a couple of days. But you really want to make sure you check on them, and they're not too soft, right? Because yes, if they go too good. soft, you open them up, and they're kind of stinky. Yes, right? and, and they're, they're brown. They're, and they're brown, and, and yeah. I've had experience. So, so <laughs> there you go. Right. So now, and then the, what we're doing over here, if you mm -hmm. want to check this out, we're doing a cheese. Pumpkin. What is that? Hmm. It goes in, and it's really cool. It goes into my recipe later. Cheese pump. It's just another variety of pumpkin, but it has a nice creaminess to it. Less fibrous, so it's not as stringy. So it's really cool to cook with. So we're going to get to that in a moment. But for this, all intention purposes, we pop the holes over here. We made a mouth, mm -hmm. and I like to say it's a cheese pumpkin jack o' lantern eating guacamole. Oh my Rawr. gosh! And that the that pomegranate is, so nice. is not what you typically have. Right? It gives it that nice sweetness to it, right? Mm -hmm. Rounds it out a little bit. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so we talked about the cheese pumpkin, mm -hmm. and then we'll go right into our other recipe, which is we're doing a pumpkin soup. And cheese pumpkin is really, really great to cook with because it, it gives it that nice creaminess texture when you have a soup, which is really cool. And it's fall, and you want a hot soup. So you got all these great ingredients. First, we're going to make our, our base, which is the mirepoix, which is celery, onions, carrots. Put in the air with a little bit of olive oil. You can put a little bit of butter in there, right? Now, I've already started this, but we're going to put some olive oil. And now, those ingredients, you know, they cook down for about maybe five, ten minutes. You know, let's soften mm. up a little bit. On like a simmer? On a, exactly. Okay. Then, we're going to go to our pumpkin. So, we're going to put the pumpkin in, right? And after we add the pumpkin, okay, ready for this? Can you tell me what that is? Take a little. Cinnamon or nutmeg? It's it's heaven. It's a pumpkin spice. It's cinnamon, oh. nutmeg, and ginger. Oh, wow. Okay. How cool is that? I mean, I could just I could just eat this, right? Yes. So you basically you add that, right? Just a little bit. And what you can do is now you're gonna let that cook down a little bit more. Give it another five ten minutes, and then we're gonna add in our liquids. Our liquids are gonna be apple cider, mm. right? Oh. This is the season. So you put our apple cider in there. After apple cider. We're going to grab some vegetable stock, right? And that's just a tiny bit of vegetable stock. You, you know what? You, you can add, you know, it, add, add it if more you think. And, yeah, and get the flavors going and give it a little bit of, mm, you know what? Maybe a little bit more, a little less. Right. And of course, we're going to use some cream right here, right? Heavy cream. Oh my God. And that's good because that's a little bit of heavy cream, exactly. so not as many calories. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yes, how, keep, how, keep telling me that. How high do you want the liquid to be on the soup? Say it again? How high do you want the oh, liquid to be? I would say about a quarter of the way up, right? Okay. And now, after all of that, we're going to do a sachet. What's a sachet? I don't know. It's a dance from the 80s. Oh, it's okay. Sachet uh, cheesecloth. You take cheesecloth. Now, if you don't have cheesecloth at home, many people don't, you can also just use twine. And what you can do is you're taking your herbs, your herbs, because you want to give a nice herbaceousness. So you got sage and you got thyme. And you can rope up your herbs, because what you can do is you're going to let that go in the stock pot, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to let it sit and simmer. You want to be able to take it out easily later on, because when you have a soup, right. you want to, right? So, so you take the cheesecloth yeah. and you just Put that all inside there, tie it up, simply put it inside. Ah, so that you right? can take it out after. You take it out after. You're going to bring that to a boil, and then you're going to let it simmer, and you're going to leave it on for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And after an hour, you should get this kind of consistency, right? And you're going to put it in a blender, and you're going to pray it up. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, they were taking the shot. That's okay. You're going yeah. to puree it in the blender. Yep. And then you get this right oh. here, which is your pumpkin apple cider shot. Thank you. Thank you. Pumpkin apple Cheers. cider Cheers. soup. Mm. Oh my goodness, that right? is delicious. And also, you can finish it with some. That is really good. Right? Thank you. With cheese on top. What, you know what? There's no rolls. Just have fun. <laughs> okay. Right? Yes. Cheese, but also pumpkin olive oil, which gives it that earthiness. You know, rounds it out. Mm -hmm. And also pumpkin seeds, if you like, which gives it a nice crunch. 
Well, this is so creamy this is delicious. and right? really this, thick. And yeah. really great for a day like today where mm -hmm. it's like rainy and cold. Totally we have one more bread. recipe too. Yeah. What is this with the okay. bacon so, or pork? Something. So we're doing a roasted autumn harvest, which is really delicious. And, and what's great about it, it's so versatile because it can go with entrees, but you can also just have vegetables and you know, like comfort food. And you're sitting home Halloween, you turn on the TV and you got your favorite scary movie. And then I'm also not going to blanket over my head and I'm not watching it. <laughs> okay. So you get uh, apples. Now, I recommend oh. honey apples, but you can also, any kind of apple. Will be great golden apples if you don't mm -hmm. find them. And what the idea with this is these roasted harvest um, vegetables, you're taking mm -hmm. advantage of all the great stuff that's out there right now so, in season. What, so, what should, so we have apples, what apples, else? Brussels sprouts, pearl onions, okay. which is really just a sweet, delicate onion, which really gives it a nice balance. Okay, and what is, is on, what's and on top? Butternut of it? squash, that's butter. A lot of butter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little <laughs> olive oil. Thanks for selling me out. Sorry, uh, we <laughs> want to get through yeah. it before the okay. summer. So, <laughs> olive oil, and okay. then we need some thyme and some sage, and that's it. We just chopped it up. Oh, by the way, I did blanch the pearl onions. And I blanched mm -hmm. the Brussels sprouts because they cook a little bit longer. Then I put the, the raw butternut squash, apples in there, toss it in your oven, 375, slow and low, as I like to say. And then you take it out a couple times, mix it up. And let me tell you something. Try these apples right here. You've never had an apple this delicious or pearl onion. How long in the oven? Oh, my goodness. These yeah. are so tender. Thank you. Thank you. I would say... Delicious. Check it. This is how you know it's done. When your when your house or your apartment starts smelling of herbs and deliciousness, half hour, 45 minutes, wow. you know it's good. But that might even be too long. That's